me at school. Well, forget that when you're voting. Charismatic is an overused word in politics, and it doesn't begin to capture the presence and appeal of a politician who connects with the public more than any other MSP. I just want you to trust me. Margot MacDonald was the SNP's blonde bombshell, a 70s icon who captured Labour govern in 1973 and remained a permanent figure in that decade's struggle for home rule. After the October 74 election, Labour danced to a nationalist tune. She was the SNP's deputy leader and a potent draw in working class heartlands. Marco's got the quality, Marco's got the style. But it wasn't enough to defeat George Robertson in Hamilton in 1978. Scotland resiled from a brief flirtation with independence. After the calamity of the 1979 devolution referendum, the SNP imploded at the general election, having helped defeat the Callaghan government in Parliament. It was a miserable time for Macdonald politically. Personally, things looked up as she married former Labour MP Jim Sillers. She turned to broadcasting, where once again her plain speaking connected with viewers and confirmed her popularity. Why do you feel, as a politician or someone interested in politics, that you've got to cover up the fact that you're interested in sex? I don't think that's the case at all. Politics, particularly the twin causes of independence and social justice, defined who she was. When Home Rule arrived, MacDonald re-entered the fray in the SNP cause. The early years of devolution were the stuff of nightmare for her, as she fell out and eventually split with the nationalists not allowing people to, to think aloud, not allowing people even to challenge what the, the orthodoxy of the party is. I'll say this carefully, so listen. She felt freedom of thought on SNP policy and strategy was being strangled by the leadership. They regarded her as a prima donna, self-indulgent and ultimately self-destructive. She stood and was elected three times as an independent, in the process becoming a respected parliamentarian and a passionate advocate for causes the political mainstream shunned. It's fair to say that there were people in the civil service and senior positions who should have known better. She was tenacious in pursuing why the Holyrood building project went over budget. She backed tolerance zones for prostitutes and twice she pioneered legislation on assisted dying. I think that dying is part of living. It's the last act of your life. Margot MacDonald was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2002. She continued with her duties diligently, bravely, and with a fortitude that won admiration even from those who had fallen out with her. Her presence on the political scene has been unique, a genuine one-off. She articulated nationalism in an inclusive way. Her left-of-centre politics were heartfelt and consistent. But towering over the causes and her values is her personality. Known universally as Margot, she resonated for over four decades in public life. Bernard, can you first of all sum up what her legacy will be here in Scotland? She was an individual who exercised great influence over great events, and that's all the more extraordinary because she never held ministerial office. In the 1970s, she was key to popularising the SNP. Post-1979, she was central in pushing that party to a political left perspective. Elected for the SNP in 1999 when devolution arrived, she made a pretty seamless transition from party politician to parliamentarian, almost in the sort of Tandiel mode, completely, utterly incorruptible, totally sincere, arguing passionately for the causes that she believed in and arguing passionately for the views of her constituents. In the devolved era, I think there is no doubt when it comes to independence of thought, independence of action, independence of spirit, Margot MacDonald stands alone. You knew her for over 25 years. What was she like away from the TV cameras? Oh, she, she was exactly the same on screen as she was off screen. Some politicians have a public persona which is at completely at odds to the way in which they are privately. Margot was Margot. What you saw was what you got. She liked to laugh. 
She liked to joke. She liked gossip. The more scurrilous the gossip, the better the gossip. She was addicted to trashy shopping channels and try to get Jim Sillers to be an expert in earrings and handbags, much to his chagrin, it has to be said. Uh, Holyrood, no doubt, is a poorer place. Holyrood will miss her. Her family, who will be in acute pain tonight, will miss her even more. And if I may be allowed a personal indulgence uh, and dispense with the uh, normal norms of neutrality and broadcasting, I'll miss her as well.